Hello and welcome to another Andy's Workshop video. This is a follow-on video from my previous one where I showed you this power supply controller that I'd built. And um, we had some fun playing around testing it. And I think I finished up, if I'm rightly, by saying that I need a case for it. And um, in this video, I'm going to show you the case that I've built. Um, what I did was I followed the same pattern as I use for my um, Reflow controller board, in which I used Inkscape, the free freeware program, to design um, an acrylic case, which I then sent off to Razor Lab in the UK to get, uh, to get cut. And um, the parts have arrived, so let's see how they look. So here's the bits as they arrived. They sent me a little leaflet thing with Maker's Cafe, laser cutting, 3D printing, and everybody needs coffee. Um, so it's nice of them. Must be some kind of... Uh, advertisement for a place I've never heard of. I'll have to keep that and have a look. So here's the bits. All um, it's, it's perspex and it's all covered in the uh, protective wrapping that these things come in. I chose a three millimeter thick perspex with, um, it's, it's basically a dark transparent color. So you won't be able to see the insides, but you should be able to see the display through it. I remember when we played with testing this thing that uh, when I was using the um, dark colored piece of plastic, I used, it's basically one of this, I used this to show you the um, you know, the, the LED display and it looked really nice. So I thought if I get, get it, the case cut from a piece like this and it should work really well. Well, let's have a look at the bits. And it's, oh, it stinks of burnt plastic and burnt bits, tell you. Even though it's been in the post for a day or so, it smells awful. Let's have a look at them all. That looks okay. That looks... Oh, what's that? Pa paper template. I didn't, oh, must be something to do with the way they cut these things. I don't know how they do the lasering of these things, but that's all singed and burnt. It's just a template piece, I guess. That can be thrown away. Another one with a piece of template stuck to the protective piece. Uh, ooh, no protective piece on that side. I hope that's not scratched. I'll have to inspect that later. I don't like it when the, uh, the piece of the protective stuff comes off. Another bit covered in paper. That's intact. And mm, that's kind of got half a, that's not impressive, is it? Half a protective piece on it. I'll have to inspect these. If they're scratched, I'll be less than impressed. And we have the uh, another main piece here. We're, yeah, with another bit rips off the uh, bottom corner. I'm going to have to do some inspection. Okay, so I'm going to verify that those are okay. And assuming that they are, I'll put the thing together. I'm not going to bore you to death by watching that. I've got all my fixings here ready. Bits and pieces, screws, um, banana plugs, sockets, everything ready. I'll get on with um, putting this thing together and we'll uh, see what it looks like. Back in a minute. Right, so I've, I've inspected these pieces of plastic now and I'm pretty sure there's no scratches on. There's a few kind of bits of residue from, from um, sticky tape where they've been bound together, but it's nothing that won't come off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Before I put it together, I just wanted to explain how these joints work. Um, what, what we have here, they're called uh, T-slots and finger joints. Now the finger joints are the um, little ridges here. And the T-slots are the these here, these funny looking um, slots that go deeper into the plastic. Now these, these are designed to hold a captive screw. So the nut goes onto the screw and is held in this little piece here. And um, the screw then binds down into the mating piece of uh, plastic that you put al alongside it like so. And basically the uh, joint is then held firm in place. The, the, um, the, finger, the finger joints are the holding it laterally in place and the, the screw, the captive screw, pulls it down so that it's held tight and fast. I used this system on the uh, reflow oven case and it worked very well. On that, I remember also on that case, because it was the first one I'd ever done, I set the kerf size, which is the additional, um, the additional sort of uh, space that you leave to compensate for the diameter of the laser beam. Um, I said it's 0.2 millimeters and I had a real hard time putting these uh, finger finger joints together. I didn't, it was uh, too much kerf space. So this time I set the kerf to 0.1 millimeters and I'm happy to say that it does uh, squeeze in rather rather nicely. So I don't think I'll have to do any forcing of things and hopefully it won't, it won't crack. So I'm going to um, put the rest of the bits together now and I'll be back in another minute. Okay, so I've got two problems, um, and they're both of my own making, which is annoying, but I think I can work around both of them. Um, they're, both, they're both to do with the um, size of cutouts in the plastic. So the first one is this power switch that I've, that I've made. Um, so the, the power switch is supposed to go in this uh, cutout here, this rectangular cutout, and the problem is it's not quite wide enough. It's really, really super close. I mean, it must be less than 
much less than a millimetre, it must be a tenth or so. Now, after thinking long and hard about it, um, I'd rather than try and file the plastic out and risk it cracking, um, and that would be quite expensive, obviously, because this is part of a much larger piece of plastic. What I'll do is I think I'll just shave a little bit off the side of the, the switch here in an attempt to bring it, bring it into size. I obviously need a tiny, tiny bit off, and um, with, a, with, with some, uh, a file and a bit of care and attention, I ought to be able to get just enough off to get this in here. And you won't be able to see it because I'll, I'll shave off the side that's facing downwards in the case. So that's the first problem. And it's really annoying because I use my calipers to measure this, you know, and I, I you know, offered it up to a, a paper template to make sure it fit and everything. And yet somehow, even though I've verified that this, this, this hole is the, exactly the correct size, according to the design, it still doesn't fit. No idea what went wrong. I guess the lesson is leave bigger, um, leave bigger gaps, leave more of a safety margin in future. So the second issue is similar. It's the, um, it's the rotary encoder. So the encoder, it's one of those cheapy ones you can get on eBay, but they work very well. Um, the, the encoder has a little like um, not raised uh, notch there. Just can you see it? I think you just about can. And that's to hold it steady, so it won't twist when you um, when you you know turn the encoder knob. And the idea is that that little that little protrusion, that little knob there, sticks through a small hole. And there is there is the small hole. And the annoying thing is that I copied this, um, you know, this, this hole, the, the larger hole and the smaller one from a pre-existing design and just, I copied and pasted it from one to another. I thought, no, oh, okay, that's gonna work, isn't it? Shouldn't have to look at this, shouldn't have to test it. But something must have gone wrong in the copy and paste because the little hole has come out smaller. The big one has, has come out fine. I mean, that's exactly the same as it was in the other design. But I checked it in Inkscape and the little one somehow shrunk, even though all I did was a copy and paste. Annoying, but again, easy to fix, and I'm, I'm definitely not going to touch that hole because it's very, it's very small. It's very close to the larger one, so the the, um, the solution for this will be just to file away a little bit of that, um, that that raised bit of metal there. This is really cheap, soft metal. I reckon with um, a Dremel or something, or even just a hand file, I'll just be able to take a little bit off the sides because again, it's really, really close to to working. Um, it's just not quite there. So that'll probably just take a few seconds of filing to bring it down to size. But again, the le another lesson learned here is to don't, don't trust uh, copy and paste. Always, always test before you send something off to be committed to um, the design. Um, okay, so I'll go and make the modifications and we'll see if we can finish this up. Okay, so it's um, mostly assembled now apart from the top piece. It took a bit longer than I expected. In fact, it took most of an afternoon and today's another day. And I decided to just give it a rest at the end of the day and I'll come back and show you what it looked like uh, on another day. Um, so let's have a quick look around the thing. Um, on the front here, we have the outputs. Uh, we have uh, you know, negative and positive there. We have the rotary encoder that I picked up from Maplin's, a little knob um, for that. And we've got the output enable and the, and the VSP switch, it's selector switch, five volts at the top, 3.3 volts at the bottom. Nothing around that side. Around the back, we've got the D sub output for the RS-232 data logger. Uh, we've got the, the uh, sense inputs, uh, positive and negative here, although the, actual, the, the um, manufacturer artisan claims it's differential, so it shouldn't matter. Um, we'll go into those in another different video. We've got the um, power supply switch here, and the well, power on off switch, and um, the power supply 12 volt in on a 2.1 input here, 2.1 millimeter input. Around the side, we've got the fan intake, um, a 40 millimeter fan held on with the you know, normal screws, same as everything else, and that blows in onto the module inside to keep it cool should it get hot. Okay, that's the, um, that's the outside. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay, so inside the box, we've got the um, power supply switch here, nice fat wires going to, um, to the uh, power input here. Um, everything, I opted to actually keep these uh, little um, pin, these little uh, headers here, those 100 mil spacing headers, screwed screw terminals. Um, rather than, uh, I could have stuck them off with um, a desolder uh, gun and I could have wired directly to the board, but just in case I want to take this thing out later, I decided to leave them in. That, that left, made it a bit harder for me to uh, reach around and insert all the wires in these different things, because there's one there's, you know, set of them down here as well. But ultimately, it, I got it going and it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult. On the, on the outputs here, we've got some nice fat wires as well because these are the, you know, the current carrying parts. Everything else uses cheapy signal wires, basically solid core that I could bend to form and then just slot into the um, screw terminals here and tighten down. That made it a bit easier to assemble for me. Up here at the, um, 
at the back here, we've got, this is an, a UART to RS-232 um, module that you can buy on eBay. Came as a kit of parts, just cost a few pounds. I assembled that and then um, screwed, screwed the D-sub the, uh, D header, the 25-pin um, the header here, right uh, straight into the uh, space that I've made into the case and it all fits rather nicely. As you can see out the back, that's for data logging. So all that remains now really for me is to um, put the top on this thing and um, we'll switch it on and we'll see what it looks like. And it works, excellent. That's with the top on. I'm just trying to hold it here at the right angle to the light, otherwise the um, reflection from the studio light above is going to completely swamp it out. It's all switched on, um, connected to this little power brick here. Uh, currently set to five volts. Let's just test that uh, by switching down to three volts. Yep, you can hear the relay click in as it uh, cuts the power, um, changes the power, uh, the um, voltage selection, and then it re-enables the power. I'll do that again without me talking. There, perfect. Um, a rotary encoder works perfectly. Everything, everything is as it should be. It's all, it's all looking rather nice. Um, the back. The little power switch at the back is uh, one of those with a little um, LED in it, which glows green there. Probably swamped out on the camera, but looks very good to me. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's actually a completed project. It's, um, it's nice to see. I, you know, I hate leaving a project in the middle where it's uh, you know it's just half finished. I actually like to finish it off. Um, and so now I've got a nice little um, five volts or three point three volt power supply, which hopefully will. Um, feature in some future videos of mine when I um, actually use it in, um, you know, as a supply for other projects. You know, I hope you've enjoyed this, this uh, shorter video, which is just building of the case. And um, if there is an accompanying write-up on my website with all the um, bits and pieces that are documented on there in case you want to build something similar yourself. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.